In this lecture, we're going to learn about how supply and demand interact to determine prices of goods and services in a market economy. So we're going to be putting together all the information that we have learned in the last couple topics and um, seeing, you know, kind of why all that stuff matters and how, how it applies. So when we put supply and demand together, um, the place where they meet is called the equilibrium. So when the demand curve crosses the supply curve, that means that the quantity supplied equals the quantity demanded. And that equilibrium is, is where the market is in balance, and it's where the market wants to be. So where the two curves cross is where the price in a market will end up and where the quantity will end up in terms of how much is produced in the market. So um, the law of supply and demand tells us that the price of any good adjusts to bring the quantity supplied and the quantity demanded for that good into balance. Markets will move towards their equilibrium as long as, as there is nothing stopping the market from, from doing so, like a government regulation or something like that. And we'll talk about those types of things in the next couple topics. So um, assume for now that there's no regulations or rules blocking a market from moving to where it wants to go, and a market left to its own vices will um, move towards and end up at its equilibrium, where the two curves cross. So let's take a look at what that looks like. Here's a demand schedule for ice cream cones or you know how much how many ice cream cones would be purchased by consumers at every given price in the market and we also have the supply schedule for ice cream cones telling us how many ice cream cones each um, producer added together in the whole market would sell at each various price and we can see that the equilibrium in this market would be $2 um, and seven ice cream cones would be purchased and sold so the equilibrium price is two dollars and the equilibrium quantity is seven because that's where the demand schedule and the supply schedule are equal and on the graph this is what it would look like where the demand curve crosses the supply curve um, the equilibrium price and quantity can be determined If the price is too high for some reason in a market, because um, it is kind of a guessing game when producers are trying to set their prices, um, if the price is too high, then the market will know because there will be what we call a surplus. I know that word's cut off on your screen, but surplus, meaning the quantity supplied at the market price is greater than the quantity demanded. And so there's extra left over at this high price that people, you know, don't want to buy, that sellers want to sell, but nobody wants to buy because the price is too high. And so when there's a surplus, the price drops. And that's just common sense. If um, Target has way too much of something that it can't sell, it's going to put it on sale or put it on clearance and try to move that product through. And the market will do the same thing. The price will drop. If the price is too high and there's a surplus, the price will drop on its own until it reaches the equilibrium. Um, on the other hand, if the price begins at a point that's too low, we end up with a shortage. Again, that word is cut off, I know, but shortage, uh, meaning that the quantity demanded is greater than the quantity supplied now at that low price. And so there are going to be people who want to buy um, the item and, and can't because there's not enough available. And that's going to cause the price to rise in the market up to the equilibrium. And so, you know, when there's a shortage of something, the price does get bidded up in a market economy. So that, that makes sense. So this is just graphically showing what we already know is true. But markets are always going to end up at their equilibrium position. And markets are going to stay at their equilibrium until something in the market changes. Um, and we have just learned that there are several things, several factors that will cause a shift in the market demand or several factors that could cause a shift in the market supply. So anytime the supply or the demand curve shifts, our equilibrium position is going to change in the market. So let's take a look first at the possibilities with demand. Um, I should also mention that there is a sheet in your workbook, your practice problems that we do in class, that has a place for you to fill this in if you want to use that as a note-taking guide. It might be a little faster. Um, so if demand increases, then we know that that means the demand curve is going to shift to the right. And as that curve shifts to the right, the, the new equilibrium is farther over to the right and up higher on your sheet of paper. We see that it's moved from here up to here. So the new equilibrium price is higher than before, 
and the new equilibrium quantity is also higher than before. Um, we don't have any real numbers on this graph, but we're just looking um, comparatively at where it was and where it is now. So we can say that when demand increases, equilibrium price and equilibrium quantity both increase. And that's always going to be true. If demand decreases, then our equilibrium is going to shift to the left and down farther on the graph. So the price drops and the equilibrium quantity also decreases as that equilibrium moves from here down to here. So we could say that when demand decreases, price and quantity both decrease in the market. And that's always going to be true as well. If supply increases and that supply curve shifts to the right, for whatever reason, anything from um, EDIT that we've learned, the supply curve shifts to the right, that equilibrium is going to move to the right and farther down, showing that the price drops and the equilibrium quantity in the market rises. And that's always going to be true. So, for example, if a new technology is adopted for the production of an item, that production is going to be more efficient. More will be produced and the price of that good will be lower. And if supply decreases for some reason, let's say the input costs rise for a producer, um, it makes sense that price will rise and that quantity, equilibrium quantity in the market will decrease. So a producer's cost increase, they're not going to be able to, to sell as much because they're going to have to charge a higher price for the item. And that's always going to be true as well. Price up, quantity down, whenever supply decreases. Okay, so just uh, a couple practice problems here. First, we have to figure out if the event causes a shift in the supply curve or the demand curve. Figure out which way that curve is going to shift. Draw it out on a graph. Identify the new equilibrium. And then compare where the equilibrium has moved. From where has it moved and where is it now? And what is that relative change? So, for example, if the nation's largest spaghetti producer cuts pasta prices, that's going to cause an increase in the demand for spaghetti sauce because spaghetti and spaghetti sauce are complementary goods. So, demand for spaghetti sauce will increase, causing equilibrium price and quantity of spaghetti sauce to rise. So, this is a related markets example. Um, Sub-zero temperatures destroy much of Florida's citrus crop. Now we're looking at the market for orange juice. Okay, this is going to have an effect on the supply of orange juice because the citrus crop um, is used to make orange juice. So this is an input cost situation or resource cost situation. So supply of orange juice will decrease because oranges are going to be more expensive, causing the price of orange juice to rise and the quantity available of orange juice to decrease. Again, just applying what we've learned to an example here. Um, if a farmer invents a new apple picking machine, which harvests those apples in half the time, that's an advancement in technology, which will cause an increase in supply. When supply increases, we know price will be driven down and the equilibrium quantity will rise for red delicious apples. And last example, Colorado Ski Resort announces a 50% increase in lift ticket prices. So in the market for hotel rooms at Colorado Ski Resorts, the demand is going to decrease because less people are going to be traveling to Colorado to go skiing if it's more expensive to ski, so less people are going to need a hotel room. So we have another related goods example here. These are complementary goods because they go together. So demand for hotel rooms will decrease, causing the price of hotel rooms to drop in Colorado and the equilibrium quantity to decrease since less people are traveling there. All right, so that's pretty simple, and, and those examples are all absolute. So anytime there's only one shift, in a market, if only the demand curve or only the supply curve shifts, then we can say with absolute certainty that we know what's going to happen. Um, but when both curves shift, there's always going to be something that's not determinable. So we call that indeterminate, something that's unknown. And uh, let me show you some examples here. So if demand and supply both increase simultaneously, then we have two different scenarios that could happen. And so it's always a good idea to draw out two graphs um, and look at each possibility so you can determine what is going to change for sure and what we don't know when you give your answer. So in possibility number one, what if there's a large increase in demand and a small increase in supply? Large increase in demand, small increase in supply. Here's our results. Okay, price up, quantity up. 
But if there's a small increase in demand and a large increase in supply, we have different results. The quantity still increases, but now the price drops. So what we can say is that when demand and supply both increase, the quantity will increase for sure, but we don't know what's going to happen to the price. If supply and demand both decrease, let's look at our two possibilities here. A large decrease in demand and a small decrease in supply would cause the price to drop and the quantity to drop. And a small decrease in demand and a large decrease in supply would cause the quantity to drop, but it would cause the price to actually rise. So we can conclude that when both supply and demand decrease, quantity will decrease for sure, but price is unknown, price is indeterminate. It's going to depend on the degree of the shifts. So a rule to help you remember that is that when supply and demand move in the same direction, price is indeterminate and quantity moves in the direction of demand. If you're a rural person, that might help you. Um, for most of you, it'll probably be helpful just to draw those two possibilities out whenever you encounter a problem like that, because I think memorizing stuff sometimes um, doesn't really help you learn it. So as long as you can graph that out and read those graphs and understand it, you're in good shape. OK, now let's look at what happens when the curves are moving in opposite directions. If demand increases and supply decreases simultaneously at the same time, Possibility number one is that we could have a large increase in demand and a small decrease in supply, causing price and quantity to rise. Possibility number two is that we could have a small increase in demand and a large decrease in supply, which would cause price to rise, but now quantity would fall. So when supply decreases and demand increases, price will always rise, but quantity is unknown. If demand decreases and supply increases, now we're doing the two curves shifting in opposite directions. If there's a large decrease in demand and a small increase in supply, price drops and quantity also decreases. But if there's a small decrease in demand and a large increase in supply, now we have um, quantity increasing. So price is always going to decrease and quantity is unknown when we have this combination of shifts occurring simultaneously. A rule to help you remember this is when supply and demand move in opposite directions, quantity is indeterminate and price moves in the direction of demand. Again, if you're a rule person, this may be helpful. If not, don't worry about memorizing this rule. You can always just graph it out and figure it out. Okay, so we'll go through some more examples of those um, dual simultaneous um, shifts in class and practice those. But just remember that anytime there's one shift, we know with absolute certainty what's going to happen to price and quantity in the market. But anytime there are two sh curves shifting simultaneously, um, either price or quantity will be unknown um, unless we're given specific data and specific numbers to work with. But relatively speaking, either price or quantity will be unknown and that would that would be the way that you would need to answer those types of questions on the test so that is it i'll see you in class